Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ken Dodd's Palace of Laughter. And here he is, the man who spent five years at Naughty Ash University, veterinary department, and eventually escaped from his cage to be with us tonight. It's your happy host, Ken Dodd. <laughs> Wigan, here at the Hardboard Hippodrome. This... What a beautiful day. What a beautiful day for going up to Eamon Andrews with a big red book and telling him he owes six weeks' rent. Yes. Oh, yes. To be here, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing... The only today, only today I discovered why this is called the Little Theatre. The manager's a pygmy. This... Here at the Wigan Theatre, they have a computerised box office. This afternoon, the woman in charge was showing me her software. And... Uh... <laughs> I was examining her floppy disks. They can't touch you, they can't. Every theatre, this is not, every theatre has a ghost. It's usually somebody has snuffed it while waiting for a ticket at the box office. This, everything, here in Wigan today, everything has been done to make Wigan attractive to tourists. Even the mur has been steam cleaned. And, <laughs> I, he didn't take too kindly having his regalia wire brushed, but there you are. This, <laughs> I came to Wigan this morning, came to Wigan, I'd only been here two minutes when I fell for this place. There was a big hole in the pavement outside. <laughs> I once queued... I once queued... I once queued at this theatre to see Shakespeare. I was buying this young couple outside the box office. I said to them, I said, is this Twelfth Night? They said, actually, yes, but don't tell anybody. We only got married on Saturday. <laughs> this... <laughs> here we are in Wigan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what a beautiful day. What beautiful day for taking Boy George into Claire Rayner's office and saying, here, sort this one out. <laughs> what a show we've got for tonight. We've got a hypnotist who'll show you how he can have a strange hold on a woman volunteer, followed by a policeman who'll show him how he can be arrested for it. <laughs> I was looking in the, in the newspaper here, the local newspaper here before the show. Don't you find some funny adverts in the personal columns of local news? Like this one here. One-legged ice skater seeks similar with a view to entering the mixed singles. <laughs> Wigan, folks. Wigan is a place where ancient crafts are still practised by the locals of the night. <clears throat> Many a wife has got into bed and told her husband to get weaving. This... <laughs> what an audience we have here tonight, folks. We have a Frenchman who makes his own gravy, the Count of Monte Bisto. <laughs> we have a medical man who doesn't recommend cortisone because he caught his own on a barbed wire fence one night. <laughs> this... <clears throat> We also have a ladies' man, there he is, on the end of the third row, in a pink dress. <laughs> the stars of the show are really in the audience, folks, because in our audience tonight, in our audience tonight, we have Arnold Cringe Factor. Arnold was born into a large family. He was schizophrenic. He was two of seven children. And... <laughs> Down here we have Paul. Paul here broke both his legs in a welly-throwing competition. He didn't know you were supposed to take him off first. <laughs> His hobbies include... His hobbies include yodelling and sliding down banisters. <clears throat> or if the banisters happen to have those little brass knobs, he does both at the same time. <laughs> He's, Paul's invented the well-known cure for amorous tomcats. It's two half bricks and a steady arm. <laughs> at the back upstairs there we have Sebastian Spoonbender. He was born at the same time as his brother and sister. <coughs> his mother was a civil servant and did everything in triplicate. <laughs> there was only room for two cots, so they put Sebastian in a drawer. That didn't work because nobody would buy the raffle tickets. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Right, folks. Right, folks, so sit back, you've paid your money, enjoy a tatty Falurious show. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting our first speciality act, The Great Vertigo. <laughs> You wouldn't believe, in a show like this, the amount of paperwork involved. You know, all behind the scenes. It's a good job I've got my secretary, Miss Golightly, to help me out. Did you mention my name, Mr Dodd? Oh, they are, Miss Golightly, yes. I was just saying, what a tower of strength you are. Oh, a tower. Do you really mean it? Of course I do. Tall, straight and stony. <laughs> <laughs> Although I must say, Miss Golightly, I'm not too happy with the way you're dressed. I don't see why not. Everybody's wearing these boiler suits now. Yes, but not with a shovel full of coal down the back. <laughs> Me. Oh, there, no. there. No, Miss Golightly, no, no. Dry your eyes on this. Oh, but it will get all wet and spoiled. Well, don't worry. It's only an old floor cloth. 
Oh, it's horrible working here. Horrible. You promised me that if I worked for you, I would become one of the jet crowd. And so you have, Miss Golightly. So you have. That's right. Twenty of us sharing one gas ring. <laughs> By the way, here's your coffee. What are you staring at? You do like it like that, don't you? Coffee? Well, yes, but I, I'd prefer it in a cup instead of loose. <laughs> <laughs> He's dripping through my fingers. Let, let, let's, let's get on. Let's get the things sorted out. Come on. Well, there's still the matter of that begging letter you said you would think about. Shall I chuck it in the bin? No, 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 no. Send it. Send it. <laughs> uh, have you, have you paid all the turns, their wages, Mr. Olaf? Like yes, it? I removed the light bulbs first and paid them out in the dark, just oh, like you said. Good, good. But, but some of them are complaining about the new bonus scheme. To be fair to everybody, let's make their bonus up to a nice round figure. That like what, Mr. Dodd? Well, like a naught. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Dodd, you're so masterful. Yes. And you make such quick decisions, the way you said. <gasps> Nice, round figure. Oh, I can feel the animal coming out in me. <laughs> you just keep that ferret down your jumper where it belongs. <laughs> oh, Mr. Dodd. Oh, can I call you Mr. Get, get off, get off. Oh. You're crushing your concertina file and oh. bending my executive oh. toys. Put me down. Oh. Look, please, I'm going to oh. shoot you. Oh, I've oh. got to get out of here. I'll go and meet some of the turns. What an escape. Hey, hey. Hey? Are you a turn? No, I'm, I'm a funny man. Hey, hey. Do you dress up as a woman? No, I don't. I... <laughs> There's a lot of it about these days. Is there? Yes. <laughs> here, do you work here, Pop? What, why are you wearing that little round hat? Well, it's me pillbox. Why aren't you well? Yeah, well, no. <laughs> I'm the call boy. Call boy? You must be 92. No, no, no. I, I'm one of the pillocks of the establishment. You mean pillars, <laughs> pillars. Pillars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've always been the cold boy here. Have you? I, yes, I get all the dancing girls ready for their little bit. Oh, I see. <laughs> I've been doing it since the naughty 90s. <laughs> I'm shattered. <laughs> well, you keep twitching. You've got that little twitch in your eye, Pop. Yes, that's winkyitis. Winkyitis? Winkyitis, that is. Yes. It's through looking through keyholes. <laughs> what the butler saw? <laughs> he didn't see half for what I've seen. What, 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 what does a call boy do, Pop? Well, you see, I have to knock on the doors and I shout, Beginners, please! Oh, really? Yes. You see that lady from Dancy? Oh, I. She's no beginner. <laughs> <laughs> what else does a call boy do? Well, I run errands for all the actors. Do you really? Yes, I do. Yes. I'm always nipping out to the pub for Sir Lawrence. Really? He likes crisps and... Um, Guinness? Yes. Now, he has pie and peas. Oh, I <laughs> And when I first came here, you know, yep. I dreamed, I used to dream of fame. Really? Yes. I was going to be a star. Oh. But fate has passed me by, you see. And, and, uh, when did you start here? Fortnight ago. Oh. <laughs> I've been on the stage, you know, Doddy. Have you? Oh, yes. I was in the gang show. Really? Yes. Oh. And riding along on the crest of the wave. And this... Very good. Yes. Start I... the car. Yes. <laughs> I had to give it up, you know. Why is that? Yes, I lost my woggle. Oh, dear. Yes. Oh, dear. Last year, last year, I joined the pensioners' pop group. Pop group? Yes. The Sex Pistols. <laughs> Yes, we only fired blanks, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> I'm going to go on my tour of inspection. Oh, here we are, the cloakroom. Hello, Clara. Oh, hello, Mr. Doddy. Hello. You've got a very nice lining client here tonight. I always think I pull a very sophisticated crowd, Clara. You certainly do. Look at this lot. Fox firming, mm. musquash. Musquash. Well, if you must, you must. <laughs> this... Hey, look at this mink. Oh, mink. You know what mink is, don't you, Clara? No. It's a tranquilizer for women. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to have a word with you, Clara. We've had one or two complaints about your handling of the cloakroom. One or two. Well, hundreds, actually. Oh. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with the way I hang them. No, but you're supposed to wait until they've taken them off first. <laughs> Look at the way you're treating men's hats. But you get more on the shelf if you flatten them. <laughs> 
Anyway, it's not easy. I get asked to hang on to some very strange things. Really? Even at your age, but there you are. What you do when you leave the theatre is your own business. Yeah. But about these complaints, Clara, I'm prepared to overlook everything, everything except... Except? Except that sign you put every night when the cloakroom's full. That sign you put up, Oxfam Shop. Now, you must take it down. <laughs> In any case, you're selling the stuff too cheap. How do you do? How do you do? Harry Shuttleworth's the name. Art welder and part-time choreographer. Oh, I see. Hi. <laughs> Without a doubt. Right. I've come to re I've come to replace Julian. Huh? Huh? Well, he broke his nose doing a movement from the nutcracker. Oh. <laughs> the nose. The nose. Aye. Oh, the nose. Aye. Yes, I see. Aye. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, the nutcracker. Yes. Hi, hi. I I am the president of the Wigan School of Ballet, Wrestling and Clogging. Oh, I see. <laughs> what experience have you got? Well, I worked with Andrew Lloyd Webber's cats last month. Really? Yes. And from here, I'd say... <laughs> I'd say they're all Toms. Well, look, young man, we start rehearsing next Saturday afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry. Next Saturday afternoon, I'm playing Hull. The Alhambra? No, Old Kingston Rovers. <laughs> I'm brought forward, you understand what oh, I, I mean? I see. I see. You're... Hey, hey, you understand? Oh, so... I... So you're an arc welding prop forward choreographer. Without a doubt. What? What exactly uh, do uh, you uh, choreograph? Uh, clog dancing. Clog dancing. Clog dancing. But I've got fourteen dancing girls for you to work on next week. Oh well, in that case, I'll bring the lads round after the game for a couple of up and unders. <laughs> I wonder if the band rehearsed the music for my weekly warble. They have. Okay, lads. Here we go. Now and forever You will be mine You know I love you Till far beyond time I want you near me Day after day Never be more than a whisper away You make my life so wonderful It's wonderful to be in love with you I'd give the sun and moon to you If it were possible for me to do I know I'll never Love someone new now and forever, forever with you. Warm as the sunrise, waking the rose, close as your shadow, my love. Always goes When you're beside me Nights end too soon Love fills my eyes When you walk in the room You make my life a melody A song no other lover ever knew you know you mean the world to me It only turns for me when I'm with you Always together Always with you Now and forever My whole world is you My whole world is you.
stage, most performers go along to the green room. The green room, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a canteen. It's halfway between a job centre and an orgy. They, in the green room, they all dress casually. Come as you are. Good Lord, is that the way you were? <laughs> Here we are then, the green room. Have your egos ready? Meet the famous and the just plain duft. It's flat, you know. What, the beer? No, no, boy, oh. The earth, boy. The earth? The earth, boy, flat, see, boy. Yes? What are you talking about? It's like a pancake. <laughs> <coughs> Look, <coughs> you'll have to excuse my confusion. We don't get many intellectuals in here. When, <laughs> when you say flat, do you mean that just round here, you mean Lancashire? Because that's easily... See, Lancashire is flat because it's their own fault for having too many steamroller rallies. But... <laughs> I mean the whole wide world, man. The whole, everything. And the countries, too. There's Russia, Benny Dawn, the Wirral. They're all flat, boy. Look, look. If the earth is like a pancake, how could we get day and night? Well, it gets tossed over, doesn't oh. it? <laughs> See, at the moment, it's dark, and it? Yes. So we're underneath the pancake. In the great frying pan of the solar system, you see. Look here, isn't it, by it? And out there, in the great kitchen of the universe, yeah. the light bulb of the sun shines down, boy. Well, well, the stars, the stars. How do you explain them, the stars? Have you ever seen a pancake without... Little holes in it. <laughs> oh, you mean if I stepped outside now and gazed up at the Milky Way, what I'm really seeing is... That's right, boy -o. What? That's right. The fridge door is open. Oh. <laughs> now, now, I can prove you. You're you wrong. See? You're wrong there, because... These are the facts. These are the facts. Oh. facts. I'm giving you facts. I'm giving you facts. Mr. Dodd, I'm from the RSPCA. Oh, the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Actors. Yes, well, I deny everything. You get well fed, plenty of exercise, and fresh water every day. No, no, I hear you've booked some animal acts. Animal acts, yes. Perhaps we could talk in your dressing room. Well, I hope you can talk better than you can out here. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're better off here, young man. I mean, in my dressing room, there isn't room to swing a cat in there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, quite. Now, I see you've booked Waldo and his disappearing doves. Yes, well, we have, we have. But Waldo's had to cancel. His doves have already disappeared. <laughs> what a shame. Well, it is for the doves. <laughs> They've disappeared inside the theatre cat. Uh, now then... Uh, 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 <coughs> My word, what was that? Come on, Sebastian. That's Albert, the stage doorkeeper. No, no, the seal. What's it doing in here? Uh, we've just come back from the baths. From the baths? Didn't they complain? Well, a bit, but once I'd washed my feet, it was all right. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, throw us a fish out of the ice bucket, gaffer. <coughs> here are them. One cod's head. Catch. So, here, throw one for the seal, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still not sure I agree with Seals on stage. He's not going on the stage. Albert, put him in the audience for tonight's show. We can do with the applause. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, hello married couples everywhere. Welcome to Never a Crossword. The spot in the show where we introduce a devoted couple, and this week we have Ada and Charlie Brighouse, who've been married for 50 years and never a crossword. Tell me, Ada, has Charlie ever been a problem? Not in 50 years, Ken. Is it time for me to step into the soundproof booth with your glamorous assistant, Shirley? No, no, no. Not tonight, Charlie. No, the resuscitation equipment's packed in. She won't need it, Doddy. She <laughs> look strong enough to me. Yes, yes, well. On with the game. And the first question is for Ada. Ada, if Charlie came home unexpectedly and found you in bed with Roger Moore, would he A, shoot him, B, recommend a good optician, or C, ask for his autograph? Oh, uh, I think he'd shoot him. He's jealous, eh? Uh, no. You see, he always preferred Sean Connery. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> 
Second question, Ada. If Charlie came home late from the pub, five hours late, and his dinner was spoiled, would you A, hit him with it, B, feed it to his pet piranha fish, or C, shove it down the front of his trousers? Yes. How do you mean, yes? Well, I, I'd, I'd hit him, feed his dinner to the piranhas, and then I'd shove the piranhas down the front of his trousers. Well, that's, well, that's 15 pounds you've got. Now, Charlie... Last question. When you and Ada were newly wed, did you A, carry Ada over the threshold, B, did she carry you over the threshold, or C, can you remember that far back? Oh, definitely A. I carried her over the threshold. I remember it well. How nice. Yes, I had to make three journeys. Right. <laughs> Now for the jackpot prize. A tease made and a chance to win £10,000. £10,000? Well, actually, it's two weeks' coupons for Spot the Ball. Your, your jackpot question is, Ada, in 50 years of marriage, has Charlie ever told you a white lie, no matter how small? Never can. Never? Never? What about last year's snooker finals? Oh, he, he told me he was in the mixed pairs and he scored. Oh, he scored, all right. He scored. With that big, busty redhead from 47 Bentley Street. You are? Hey, you just call me a child. I don't know about snooker. You certainly needed a rest. And so, listeners, Adrian Charlie won £20 and a chance to enter the finals of the tag wrestling with Big Daddy and Giant Haystocks. Touchy bye for now, everybody. Touchy Our live theatre show is proud to present a, a, a play every week, so I'm just going to pop along to the rehearsal room and see how our thespians are rehearsing for next week's play. <coughs> I can't take any more. The heat, the dust, the insects. <laughs> Nothing to drink. A man could go mad, mad, do you hear? Mad. Look, look just hold it, hold it there. Look, I don't want to be overcritical, but this is your first play. Well, yes, how did you know? Well, scene shifters are supposed to keep their thoughts to themselves. <laughs> Bertha. <laughs> right, Bertha, Bertha, I want you to move, just move a few yards further towards the wings. But the audience won't see my face. Exactly, dear. Now, <laughs> Quentin, you enter stage left, and it's your line, Quentin. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> the bell... The bell, the bells, the bells I hear. I must, I must Quentin. obey the bell. Qu Quentin, don't you think you're building your part up just the teeniest bit? <laughs> oh, Mr. Dodd, whatever makes you say that? Well, the script says the butler is summoned to the dining room. <laughs> right, now, stand by, everybody. Are we ready now? Quiet. Now, action. We present Lancashire playwright Tennessee Elbows... The black pudding strikes back. Mr. Ackroyd, Mr. Ackroyd, there's trouble at Mill, sir. Oh, can't it wait? I'm giving Miss Secretary a hand. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Mr. Ackroyd, really? Oh, all right then. What is it, Fanakapan? They've all come out, sir. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> They've heard rumours of devil's work up here and they've walked out on strike. Strike? Yes. Strike? Strike. They've given those people job security overalls. What more do they want? Well, they were thinking that perhaps some money would be nice. Money? <laughs> Don't mention that word in this office. I'm one of the last bastions left in this town. <laughs> yes, I have heard it said. <laughs> Come on, let's get back to work. Right, Sandra, it's time to remove them. Yes, remove those big white sheets from the table. But, 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 No, for Nakapan, it's not a Honda 250. This, this is... Oh, 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 ee, it's horrible! It's not that bad as MF, as MFI tables go. No, no, that, that thing laying there. That thing, that's my very own creation. A giant, super intelligent black pudding. <laughs> I made its jeans myself. But it was either jeans or a couple of pairs of old cords. I don't know what it was. But... <laughs> when I throw this switch for Nakaman, the sliding roof will open above us. Hey. And a tremendous electrical current will pass through it. Oh, you're mad, Ackroyd, you're mad! Do you hear me? Mad! Completely insane! <laughs> Stand staring mad! You'll be punished for this! <laughs> How the 
hell did you get in this sketch? <laughs> I've got plans. I've got people say I'm mad. <laughs> Do I look mad? <laughs> I've got plans for a mutant sausage. <laughs> Giant chitterlings. Gigantic savoury ducks, Mrs. The size of salt. <laughs> <laughs> Thunderstorm at last. And look, lightning striking through the roof. Look, my black pudding lives. Oh, oh it's breaking free. Quick, Sandra, hit it with the chair. No, oh, not me, a fool. You meant the black pudding. I'll give it a hundred thousand volts and make it walk. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Ackroyd, you've destroyed it. It's splattered all over the room. Ah, oh, well, never mind. We'll salvage what we can. Do a few chips, Sandra, and I'll get on with my next project. <laughs> What's that? A bottle of HP sauce the size of Big Ben. They say I'm not, but I'm not. The Palace of Laughter from Wigan Little Theatre starred Ken Dodd with Peter Goodright, Paula Tilbrook, the Simmons Brothers and Sibby Jones. Music by the Ken Adams Palace Band. Written by John Pye, John Walker, Barry Roberts and Roy Dixon and produced by Ron McDonnell in Manchester. 